friends, welcome to the Fibre Bound podcast. This is episode 26. My name is Ali and I am coming to you today from Adelaide, Australia, where I live with my husband, our two sons, our dog Shorty and our chickens. And today is September 9th. It is the afternoon. The day has been a busy one. I have had the day off work, which has been lovely. We've just gotten home from having a coffee out at a, a new to us little cafe in the country, which was really nice. And I thought I would sit down with you and record a little, a little update as the weeks just seem to be flying by and I am knitting up a storm. I am so obsessed with all of my projects right now. So I thought I best check in because the pile of whips is growing and I feel like there's a lot to get through. I fear that if I leave this too much longer, it's just gonna be like a two and a half hour episode. <laughs> My aim today is to try to get this down around an hour. We shall see how we go. That is the hope. It is already 5 p.m. So it would be nice to get it done by six o'clock so that I can go and participate in the family evening routine. But yeah, it's so lovely to be here with you today. This is predominantly a knitting podcast. Occasionally there is a little bit of crochet and there is a little bit today. And sometimes, less occasionally, a little bit of sewing. None of that today. But I have a bunch of finished objects to share with you. Actually, not that many. I have four to share with you, three of which I actually have with me. And I have quite a few whips. Cast on itis. Well, I'm, I'm abating it. I am being self-controlled. I am not casting on everything that I want to But you'll see with some of my acquisitions, which I don't think I'll share everything today. I'll just share some key things today uh, I have plans to make all the things <laughs> and very little knitting time to actually accomplish making all the things before we get into the podcast proper I'd like to just ask you to please like and subscribe. If you enjoy knitting content, it will really help to uh, push this video out to other like-minded knitters or crocheters, uh, and it really does help the channel out a lot. So I really do appreciate any likes, any comments, anyone that subscribes. I try to release an episode at least once every two to three weeks. Um, realistically it's been monthly this year but the aim is two to three weeks and I actually have another fun video that I have recorded this morning that I will be sharing shortly too which is a little bit different but a lot of fun I will talk a little bit about it later today in terms of acquisitions as well so I'm having a coffee today in my crazy knitting lady mug that my husband got me as a gift one year for I can't remember what it was for, but it is perfect. It is very true, especially right now. I am feeling all the crazy knitting lady vibes and I just can't stop knitting. <laughs> a final thing before we get started on the knitting project is to remind you all that there is a year long make along happening on this channel right now and over on Instagram. So I am hosting the Use Your Sock Yarn Make Along or Mal 2024 this year. And it just encourages you to use your sock yarn, whether it's a fingering weight or four ply yarn or a DK weight eight ply yarn. If you would knit socks with it, you don't have to knit socks with it, but if you would use it for socks, I encourage you to use some of your stash or some new purchases that you may have acquired over the recent years, months, days. Sock yarn tends to come into our lives quite easily as knitters and it is nice to have an excuse to cast on and knit it up. So I encourage you to use your sock yarn. If you finish a project within a month, you are eligible to enter for a physical prize and there, all the information is down below. There is a Google form that you need to complete for that. And otherwise, please participate on Instagram by using the hashtag useyoursockyarnmail2024 and I, I have been drawing quarterly prizes from that hashtag and I, do, I did a mid-year prize draw in my last vlog. If you've missed that, go check it out, see if you're one of our winners and I will do an end of year uh, physical prize drawing as well for anyone who finishes within the month. So let's get into the episode. We are quite a few minutes into the intro and I have not shown you anything yet. So let's do this. 
I will start off with our finished objects today. I usually follow the standard podcast format, finished objects, works in progress, acquisitions, if you are interested in those as well. And so I have three to show you today, though there were four in total since I recorded last. The fourth one my son has with him, so I can't show you physically, but I did take some footage, so I will pop it up on the screen. So the first thing I shall show you, and I don't think, I think this may have been the first thing I finished, is a pair of socks that I've spoken about in my previous episode and I talked about during my vlog, but I shall just recap here. These are a pair of socks that I knit for my son for his 20th birthday. I don't know if that texture's coming up very well. You'll note that each of the socks is a slightly different tone. I pulled from the outside of the yarn cake and from the inside of the yarn cake to knit each of these. Uh, so that is why they are slightly different toned. Obviously there was a little bit more saturation in one half of the skein than there was in the other half. But I love them and he loves them and this is my first design that is still yet to be written up or well, finished writing up. I have started the write-up process. It just hasn't quite progressed because I want to knit everything. <laughs> so to recap this one, this is a fingering weight yarn. It is by Craft by Bella store and it is in the colorway Ogres are like onions. A beautiful Shrek reference that my son loved because when he was three he thought he was Shrek. I cast on 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter or a US one needle and I knit the cuff I think I usually go about 20 rounds these days and then I did the leg for my son I tend to do around the 60 rounds for the leg did a heel flap and gusset and then the foot and a rounded toe now I will write up this pattern uh, eventually it will be out for testing soon I foresee that that should happen very soon now that this is finished. This is the second sample I have knit of this um, design. The first sample I knit back in January or February that I did speak about on a previous episode. And I thought I'd knit a second sample to re-familiarize myself with my pattern and I will finish writing that up soon. So these are the first finished object. I think that is all I wanted to share about those, though I'm sure I'm forgetting something. My second finished object was actually the muscle borough hat which I knit for my son as well. Now I don't have it with me but I did take some footage and some photos of it. Now just to let you know also I have started keeping track of how long things are on the needles. I love hearing this from aka Nora Knits who uh, has introduced me to this concept of showing how many days a project has been on the needles and recently I've also noticed Tash from Mostly Knitting is doing it too and I love that. I think it's so much fun. Actually the Crazy Sock Lady might have started doing it too. It is so nice to see how long things take so when you've got multiple projects on the needles it can sometimes feel like you're working on something for a very long time but it's nice to see the stats. This pair of socks was on the needles for 46 days. It went to Bendigo with me it has done the rounds, it has traveled around and it brings so many good memories. So that was my first finished object. And now my second finished object was the muscle borough hat. And I knit that in the in a DK weight this time. So I talked about this in my last episode and I used the West Yorkshire Spinners Color Lab Sock DK yarn, which I believe is a 75% Merino 20 percent nylon just making sure I said that right I knit this hat on a 3.25 millimeter needle or a US 3 and I absolutely love how this one turned out I ended up trying to knit through the whole 150 gram ball and I ended up with a little bit left over so I don't have the grams on this page but I have a tiny nugget here somewhere I have the label too so that's all of the yarn that I have left. 
I have weighed it and all of the details are on my project page, which reminds me, everything I speak about today will be linked in the description below, usually to my Ravelry project pages, as um, any shops that I talk about will be linked down below to at least the Instagram page, if not the actual shop. So yes, uh, that is the leftover yarn that I used for the Muscle Borough hat. I knit the adult large, I think it ended up being. I feel like my gauge changed a little bit while I was knitting this. I spoke about this on the last episode, but I found that that worked out amazing and it gave me a perfect size. My son loves this hat, so he did leave it in this room for me for a couple of, for about a week before he took it and is wearing it now. And he's away at trade school this week, so I can't even ask him to give it to me to show you, but um, I do have footage, so that's fine. So this hat ended up using 141 grams. I did write it down. 141 grams of that DK weight sock yarn, and it gave me um, pre-blocking, I think it was around 20, two and a half, 23 inches long. And post blocking, it grew to a nice 24 ish inches. It can be worn as a slouchy fit or as a, a double brim layer fit. And he prefers the double brim. He likes the extra warmth on his ears and he's not that keen on the slouchy fit. So it's worked out perfectly for him. And it fits him perfectly. It fit me perfectly. Part of me did not want to gift it to him. It's been a win. <laughs> That hat was on the needles for 45 days as well. So absolutely glorious project. I really enjoyed knitting on it. I really enjoyed gifting it to him. So that was a lot of fun. DK weight sock yarn, you'll need over one skein if you are keen on doing that, which is why this Color Lab sock yarn is so good. You get 150 grams in a ball and it goes a long way. My next finished object is another pair of socks. And again, you've seen these in the previous episode and on the vlog, but I finished it, I think last weekend, finished this pair. And I love these so much. These are my Brisbane socks. This is a pattern by Kath Martin of Mindful Melbourne Making Podcast. I will link her channel below. You really need to check it out if you are into Australian knitting podcasts or if you're into knitting in general because she is a prolific and very talented knitter and she's become a very good friend of mine which is fantastic. It's so nice to have been able to meet in person. Uh, recently. So I test knit this pattern for Kath. It is, I think I've said already, the Brisbane socks. They have this beautiful chevron pattern on the front and that's repeated uh, twice. And then it also repeats along the back. And this was such a fun knit. It's a two row repeat and it was so potato chippy. You just wanted to get to the next one and the next one and the next one. And before you knew it, the leg was done and then you got the heel done and then the foot was done. And it was a very quick knit when I worked on it. Now for this pair, I tried the Flegel heel for the first time, which is a different heel construction for me. And I found that very enjoyable. I haven't worn these yet, so I'm not exactly sure what the fit is, but I will try them out once I've finished recording and uh, I will report back to see how I enjoy the Flegel heel. I definitely enjoyed knitting it. It was so, it was so fun to knit and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how they actually wear as well. For the main color yarn, I used Whatnot, and this colorway is called Toffee Apple. Um, Kathy from Whatnot is not dying at the moment. Uh, this is from Old Stash from an advent calendar that I was lucky enough to get back in 2020, I think. The mini is from another dyer who is no longer dying, and that was Ash and Oak Designs, who um, absolutely got me very hooked on hand dyed yarn back when I first started knitting. Unfortunately, Monica's no longer dying either, uh, but absolutely beautiful combination. I felt like this really represented Brisbane, which is in our sunshine state. And I am so happy with the yarn and the pattern combination here. Now I did knit these again on a 2.25 millimeter needle or a US one. This is a four ply or a fingering weight yarn and I knit all of my 
uh, fingering weight yarn socks on that size needle unless it's color work um, having said that I did actually size up I just remembered I sized up for the leg and the foot the chevron pattern um, cinches in the circumference a little bit so it was recommended in the pattern that you go up to a 2.5 millimeter or the next size up if you normally don't use the 2.25 millimeter needle when you knit socks to make sure that it still uh, fit your leg and your foot and it got over your heel okay so i did actually size up the leg and the foot and knit on 2.5 millimeter needles just to account for the cinching up due to the chevron pattern and that seems to have worked fine i have tried these on they feel great on my foot it'll just be interesting to see how they wear in terms of the different heel that i haven't knit before so this was very fun. Kath has released this pattern now, so it is available on Ravelry, and I highly recommend it. If you're after something that's sort of like a vanilla, but a little bit of interest, I highly recommend this. Every second round is a straight round. So it's a very memorizable pattern, which I love. I love it when I don't have to look at the pattern the whole time and I can just knit, knit, knit. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. I just remembered, I forgot to tell you how long these were on the needles. I may forget, so I do apologize. So the Brisbane socks were on the needles for 31 days. So basically done within the month. Now my final finished object for today, which is something a little bit different for me, but it was so much fun to knit and participate in this make along. I was inspired again by Kath from Mindful Melbourne Making and it was the Gnomes of Grimblewood Mystery Knit Along that I participated in during August. And I knit Natty the Unexpected Gnome. He's got some little movable hands here. He can wave hello. <laughs> he's so cute. And he's so rotund. I love him. He's my first ever gnome. I've never knit a gnome before. It's just not something that I've ever really prioritized and I probably wouldn't have if the knit along, the mystery knit along hadn't been running at the time. But it was just a great excuse to knit a little bit on each of the clues each week without having to commit to let's knit a gnome in a day, which is where I would hyper focus normally. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the first clue uh, that came out was just the hat. Then the second clue was half the body. The third clue was the rest of the body, I think. And then the fourth clue were the arms, the beard and the gorgeous little nose. And this pattern is by Imagined Landscapes or Sarah Shearer, I think it is. And uh, it's part of the new publication that Sarah is about to release. I don't think it's out yet. If, if you like the idea of knitting toys, knitting gnomes, I highly recommend. The pattern was very fun. There are lots of video tutorials to support you through the process of the techniques that are in the patterns. And I had a great time knitting this. It's so fun. So he's going to be my little mate. He'll probably hang out in here, I guess. Or he may go on adventures. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, that's my final finished object. And Natty was on the needles for a record of 22 days. So he was a quick knit. And I didn't knit on him regularly too. Like I knit on him when the first clue came out, then when the second clue came out, and so on and so forth. So it was probably a couple of hours of knitting a week if that it really wasn't a huge time commitment but you get something very cute at the end of it so natty is done before i move on to works in progress i might just talk about what i am wearing today because i think i forgot to tell you at the beginning <laughs> so today i am wearing my ranunculus by midori hirose I think that's right I will pop the name on the screen and I will link the project page down below I knit this back in 2020 I want to say it's been a little while and I wear this one quite regularly 
I absolutely love it. I When I knit this, there was only one size available in the pattern. I believe that the pattern has been updated since and there are multiple size options for you to choose from. When I knit it, it was one size. And when I knit it, it was just short sleeve, but I decided to modify it and have long sleeves. And I also, I think I had a different gauge to the pattern. Can't remember the exact details, but I absolutely love the way this one turned out. So this is knit in <laughs> A fun combination of yarns. I might see if I can find an, an old picture of the yarn before I knit it up to show you what the yarn looked like beforehand because this was a fun experiment where I wanted a mauve coloured sweater. I could not find mauve coloured yarn but I did have some grey yarn and I had some pink fluff or silk mohair and I combined them and I mild them and it came up with this beautiful tone of sort of a mauve. Now this lighting may not be 100% accurate, we are losing daylight at the moment, but I think it's pretty right when I look at it in the viewfinder. And I love it. I absolutely love the way this one turned out. I loved knitting it. I feel like it was a really quick knit. There was a I think this is one of my first ever provisional casts on for the neck and I think I did the small neck. I can't remember now again. It should be in my um, project notes. And there's a little bit of beautiful interest with the lace work here in the yoke and then uh, you basically separate for the sleeves and you just knit down. And I believe there's quite a bit of uh, twisted rib on the base. Yeah, I think I did around two inches of twisted rib on the bottom of it and the fun thing as well i think this was my first ever i-cord bind off on a sleeve and i actually really love the fit of this i feel like the sleeves are the perfect length the ease is perfect and this was one of my very first sweaters i think it wasn't my first but it was certainly one of the earlier ones that i knit and i love it so if you've not knit the ranunculus yet Highly recommend it. I feel like everyone has knit it multiple times and I have plans to knit more of them. I have yarn here for both Ranunculi and Love Notes that I plan to knit if I have more time. <laughs> so yeah, highly recommend this one. It's a really fun one. With that, let's move on to my works in progress. And I might start off with the oldest one today, which I have made a little bit of progress on. The first work in progress that I will talk to you about today is being held in this beautiful crystal cat stitchery project bag. It's a corduroy pink project bag. Again, the lighting here might be, we might be losing light. So I don't know how that color is coming through but it is one of my favorite bags. That's probably more accurate right there, actually. <laughs> uh, so this is something that has been on the needles for almost a year. Today is day 339 on the needles. And I honestly did not touch this for a good six plus months. So it's not a representation of volume of knitting or the length that it takes to knit something it's literally squirrel i just keep getting distracted by other things so i hadn't prioritized it and uh yeah we're almost at the end though so i'll talk about the yarn in a minute but let's show you what this is it's not finished yet and it's squished up on the needles but this is my geo gradient shawl which was the MCAL in 2023 by Stephen West. <laughs> it's impossible to show it all scrunched up. But there it is so far. We're almost there. We're almost there. When I showed it to you last month, I was at this Progress Keeper here. Now this is one that I made myself with some polymer clay a few years ago. So I finished clue three which took me longer than I thought it should have at the time, but it is what it is. Again, I keep wanting to knit on everything so things get a little bit of progress. But I finished clue three there, which were these lovely slip stitch rows of the faded 
colors which I love the way that has turned out and that's repeated on the other side so that's um, mirrored over here as well and I finished this side um, sometime in December maybe maybe November can't really remember exactly when I finished it before or when I worked on it before but I know there was a big hiatus from maybe December through to the last episode when I talked about it <laughs> so that was a while but what I've done now is I've started clue four which is the border and the border has <laughs> I'm so wrapped up here the border has these beautiful dip stitches and I have completed two out of the four dip stitches, almost completed. I'm about halfway through the red ones. And they go all the way along the bottom of this shawl. Current stitch count is 502 stitches. But they're so worth it. They look amazing. Now I've got some needle toppers on here because obviously there's a lot of stitches on the needles. These are old rainbow and sprinkles, I believe, needle toppers and they're little rainbows. And I find these so useful. I've actually got some on pretty much every project at the moment, different shapes, different patterns, but they have been a real lifesaver with all the projects that I have got going on and I'm pulling things in and out of project bags. I'm not, I'm not losing stitches. So these are really good. So yeah, this is my Stephen West West Knit Shawl. Um, I have figured out a technique to make sure these dip stitches are actually quite fast comparatively now. Now I just finished, I finished the dip stitch row yesterday morning and then I met up with a friend yesterday afternoon and we went to one of our local yarn stores and I had over a thousand stitches on the needles at that time. And the return round gets you to um, decrease back down to 501 stitches and then you make one at the end of that row so i think it took me about an hour of solid knitting to get through that thousand stitch row the dip stitches are still taking much longer than that so that's why there are only two done but i still am very very happy that i've at least done the two since i saw you last considering I've been knitting on other things too. Now the yarn, I'll quickly go through. This is all old stash yarn. I talked about this in the last episode too, but I last for last year's MCAL, I pulled from stash and I was able to come up with this beautiful fade. The first two here are Finch yarns. One is called On Point. The other one is called Ballet Slipper. And I can't remember which one's which now. They are in my project pages. And I'm pretty sure I knit on, I'm pretty sure I mentioned there which one was color A, B, and C. Now color C is by Cola Girl Collective. It is her scarlet letter colorway and it is the most perfect red. And this color D, which looks really dark right now, that's better. This is by Lovebird Lane. And it's a colorway called Quarantine 15. No, it isn't. It's called Netflix and something. Netflix and Chill? I think it's Netflix and Chill. I forgot to talk about the yarns I used for Natty. They were all leftovers. Um, one of which was Quarantine 15 for the body here. So that's very much Julianne's beautiful color palettes right there. So Julianne is Lovebird Lane. Um, one of my favorite colorways. Another one of my favorites. Uh, so yes, we've got those four yarns there. They're all a singles base except for this last one, which is a Stellina base. And I think it's a gold Stellina from looking at that closely. And it looks well dark in this lighting, but it's that that's probably about right there. I love it. Absolutely love this combination. Love how this is knitting up. My aim is to finish this before October when the new 2024 MCAL starts with Stephen West and I'm on track. If I can get one of these dip stitches done a week, which is what I've been averaging, it will be done before October because we still have three weeks left of September. 
so yeah two more dip stitches and big eye cord bind off we're on track so that is my geo gradient mcal from 2023 with some progress made and next time you see it it will be finished it will be finished the next work in progress I want to share with you has been on the needles for 38 days and I am so obsessed with it. <laughs> I am loving this project so much. If you've been here before, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm holding this one in my Oh Wow Amsterdam bag, which is one of their, I think it's a medium or a large bag. This one was a collaboration with one of my local yarn stores, Yarn Trader that I purchased earlier this year with a gift voucher that I had from Christmas. So love this bag. It is such a good sweater bag. It's just perfect. And it's got all the yarn in there. It's got the sweater in there. And you can see she's a little chunky and I like her a lot. <laughs> and I love what's inside. So the next thing that I would like to show with you today is my Arbor Raglan sweater. There has been progress. I will try to get some footage of me trying this on because it's actually such a pleasure to try on right now. I am about halfway through the body and I am three quarters of the way through a sleeve and I am so obsessed with this. So last time I showed this to you on the podcast, I was where this lovely tiny teddy stitch marker or progress keeper is. And so since then I split for the sleeves and have knit the majority of one of the sleeves as well. Now this progress keeper shows you where I was when I finished recording my last week of making vlog. So this is the progress I've made since that recording finished two weeks ago. So I'm averaging about a similar amount each fortnight by the looks of it there on the body. And I'm about halfway done with the body. This is the front. But I thought I would pick up one of the sleeves because I've been so worried about running out of yarn on this one that I thought I need to get the sleeves done so I know how much yarn I have left to finish the body. Retrospectively, I don't think I needed to have worried because I made some adjustments for the circumference of the sweater and the positive ease and my gauge changed as well. So I don't think I'm using anywhere near the amount of yarn that I thought I would use on this, but I'm loving it. You'll see there is a lifeline here that I put in right before the sleeve separation or just before I decided where the sleeve separation would be before I added some extra rounds to make sure the yoke depth was enough and that was just for, for insurance. I made some adjustments to this one so there are lots of notes on my project page talking about the exact charts that I use for the different areas because I did adjust the increases and the yoke depth to match how I want this to fit. So I'm going to have maybe four inches of positive ease on this one, maybe not even quite, maybe three inches of positive ease, which I think is plenty. Um, right now it's measuring about 39 inches and I'm a 37 inch bust. So right now it's around two inches. But when I checked my gauge swatch, it grew by about 12%. So when I did that calculation, I'm thinking 41, 42 inches should be the finished circumference of this one. But I will confirm that once I wet block it. So I made some adjustments as I've mentioned. This pattern is quite fun for adjusting actually, because it starts off with the exact same cast on for every size. And it's not up until this lifeline that you make a decision on whether you want to make it larger or not and you work towards your size of increases and your number of rounds to make sure you get the right yoke depth and then the right circumference now because my gauge was different i had to make adjustments outside of what was written in the pattern i am aiming for the finished object of this to be between the size two and three that's written in the pattern that's sort of my ideal size for my intended positive ease and my actual bust circumference and I ended up stopping the increases when I reached the full size one increase because my gauge is a lot looser 
I am knitting this on smaller needles though as well. So I'm pretty sure it's written to be knit on a 4.5 millimeter needle. And I am knitting my body and sleeves on a four millimeter needle. And yet my, yet my gauge was still larger. So I made adjustments to make sure that I didn't end up with something very massive. And also that I didn't run out of yarn without being able to finish this project. So what I did once I reached the size one there was look at the stitch counts for each of the sizes. I looked at the charts for each of the sizes to determine how best to proceed to make sure I wasn't increasing anymore, but I still got the right yoke depth. And my sleeves, I was quite happy with the size of these two. Originally, they're quite oversized sleeves and I was quite happy for them not to be that oversized, again, with the concern of yarn management. And I actually really like the fit of these sleeves. They're about a 12 inch circumference right now. And I think they'll block out to around the 13 inch circumference at least, which will be really quite perfect for me. Um, I will put all of those measurements once it's finished and blocked. But I do find that it has been perfect. The adjustments worked out perfectly. I made a slight error when I split the sleeves and it was basically not accounting for the fact that we hadn't been increasing anymore um, for the last few rounds, which meant that my pattern was offset from where my foundation round after sleeve separation was meant to be. Luckily, I've had some experience with lace knitting before, so I was able to figure out which line of the chart I should be on for the next section. I had to tink back four rounds to make sure I could fix that, but it was well worth it because my lace is now lined up perfectly. You cannot see where that faux pas was, but it really did happen around here. So I was able to rectify that. There was a combination of using a different size chart for the extra yoke depth and then going back to the original chart but having to flip things because of the stitch count change between where the sleeve separation should have been and where it actually was in terms of the depth and the lack of increases. That may be very confusing. I do have very copious notes on my project page because I was worried I would forget what I did if I didn't write it down, so feel free to check that out. But despite all of that, despite all of the adjustment, all of the mod modifications I have made, this has been the most joyous knit. I am absolutely loving it so much. Now my aim was to get through one ball, which I have done on the sleeve. And now I will actually do the second sleeve before um, I start going back on the body. And I expect that this will be done pretty soon because it is so potato chippy. It's a 16 round repeat for the lace chart. And it's just on the sleeve in particular, you get through those 16 rounds really quickly. And it's so potato chippy, which is why this sleeve is so far progressed. <laughs> but yeah, I'm loving this. I went to uh, our Adelaide's first movie knit night a couple of weeks ago that my yarn store organized and uh, I think we called it knits at the flicks I think and I took this with me and I knit on this at the cinema and it was brilliant it the, it's such an intuitive lace pattern repeat every second round is a knit round so you get a break from thinking every second round but even the lace rounds they're just so easy to memorize and well i can't memorize them i still have to refer to the chart but as you're going around the chart it's easy to keep track and my other tip is putting progress keepers or stitch markers i'll pop this upside down so you can see to separate your lace repeats so the lace repeat is actually eight stitches but i've got a progress keeper every 16. so within two lace repeats if i'm out on stitch numbers or if i've if i'm missing a stitch or if something's not right i pick it up within 16 stitches rather than on the next round or at the end of a round so that's been really fun to do that i've done it on the sleeve as well so the sleeve also has a marker every 16 stitches 
to help me keep track of that. Now, um, again, I'm using some stitch stoppers. These are, again, I think from Rainbow and Sprinkles. Oops, they're little flowers. Now, these ones, I'm not sure. I've collected them from various places over time. And these are either Rainbow and Sprinkles or they may have been a yarnable box. I really don't remember. But they're little unicorns. And I'm obsessed with all of these little um, needle toppers. They're very, very convenient. It makes sure that I don't drop the stitches, especially lace. I don't want to have to be playing with that and picking up lace stitches. And oh, the, others, the other thing to mention, I have really fallen in love with try it on tubing which I'm using to hold my sleeve stitches in place before I pick up this second sleeve amazing I had some for a little while I bought some about a year ago and then didn't really use them because I usually just use the cable from my needles usually just use a 14 inch cable to hold my sleeve stitches until I get a chance to work on my sleeves but I do find that it's so much easier to try on with this. Um, it gives you a little bit more space. And then as I'm trying things on, it's so easy to move the stitches onto try it on tubing and then back onto your needle without having to mess around or risk losing stitches or anything like that. So yeah, highly recommend try it on tubing or barber cords or whatever type you can get where you are. I love them. I have two sets now and I, I am very grateful that I have two sets. So yeah, my Arbor sweater, which is just bringing me all the feels, all the good feels. I love it. Don't know if I mentioned, this is a pattern by White Owl Crochet Co. Uh, Molly Conrad amazing designer she has done such a great job with this pattern and made it so easy to customize by providing so much information for each of the sizes to help those sizes but if you need to make adjustments you can sort of get a better idea of what you could do by looking at the other size charts if you need to which is very very helpful love this it's getting so dark in here the yarn I'm using for my Arbor Raglan is by Knit Picks. It is the Swish Worsted. It is 100% fine superwash merino wool, 110 yards to 50 grams by Knit Picks. And this is the colorway Squirrel Heather, which I am very conscious that the lighting's getting worse and worse. I'm so sorry to be recording so late. <laughs> My next work in progress is another garment, which if you have watched the last week of making vlog, you know all about this one, but there has been some progress. So I'm holding this one in my The Knitting Dentist bag that I absolutely love. It's got beautiful bronze, gold, grey yarn balls on the fabric, and it's just a really good size. So this is amazing. And in here I have my Alma cardigan. Last time you saw this, if you watched the vlog, I had just done the bottom ribbing, which was a process because apparently I had I have to cast things on three times before I get it right. <laughs> so this is a bottom up construction, which is quite new to me. And I have said before, I've never done bottom up. And then I remembered that I have done one top bottom up, but never a sweater. So I did do the botanical top or botanical tee for Knititude, which is a bottom up quite some years ago. Had completely forgotten that I did that. But this is my first bottom up sweater. And this is my first bottom up cardigan. This is my first steaking project when I get to it and it is color work and it is non superwash and it is amazing. I am using a kit from Louis and Lola yarn for this project and it is, this is the main color here which is called Pinot and it is a DK weight or 8 ply base. It's 80% merino, 20% possum fur, 248 meters per 100 grams. Yeah. I love this color and I'm actually using three contrast colors. All of the colorways are listed in my project page because I do have three contrast colors in this project. And let's show you where we're at. So 
This is my Alma cardigan so far. And there's some beautiful color work. And I've just finished the second color, so I don't know if you can see in this light because the light is becoming really quite bad. But we start off with the contrast color being this very light natural color. And then around here, I think, we move into the next tone. I think you can see that actually. And now I'm about to add the third tone, which will be this one here. And I'm so excited. I've just wound this this afternoon and I'm so excited to get the next color in there. So this pattern is the Alma cardigan. I think I've already said that. It is a pattern by Susanna Kartanen of Sana & Co. And the yarn is by Louis and Lola Yarns. And there is a make along or a knit along happening right now for this pattern and the other patterns that are in this Alma range. There is a vest, I believe, maybe a children's vest at the moment. So you can knit the cardigan, you can knit the vest. And it runs up until mid-November from memory. And so yeah, I'm really loving this knit. It is so fun to work on and I feel like it goes pretty quickly in reality, even though it doesn't look like I've made much progress, but squirrel. I sat down to this the other night and I think, actually I did put a progress keeper. I'll show you how much I managed to knit in one evening after knitting on other things as well. I think this was my Sunday night. So that's where I started and I got to that. So I think there was about seven rows, seven rounds ish. And yeah, it was good fun. Now I struggled to meet Gage on this project in Stockinette and I had to size down a couple of needle sizes for the corrugated ribbing and the Stockinette portion. The color work is meant to be done on a 4.5 millimeter needle and I am currently doing this on a four millimeter needle and when I go back to the stockinette once the color work is finished uh, I think I'll I gauge swatched and I should have gotten gauge on a 3.5 millimeter needle and I think I'll go down to that size to make sure that my stitches don't become too loose compared to the color work but I am really happy with how this is working out. So yeah, bottom up construction, color work, good fun. I've had to change needle sizes because I'm a loose knitter and it is working up really nicely. And it looks so good on the camera. <laughs> I'm really excited about that contrast. It's just looking so pretty. The color work looks amazing. You don't notice it as you're sort of knitting on it, but looking at it from a distance, I mean, you do notice it, of course, but that contrast looks really, really pretty. I'm so happy with this choice, this kit choice. So yes, that is my Alma cardigan, which is a lot of fun. If you're interested in joining the knit along, you can knit with any yarn. You don't have to use the kit yarn. You can absolutely choose whatever you like. There is a group on Susanna's Ravelry page and there's a whole uh, knit along chat going on there which is cool and I think next week we have a virtual check-in so whoever's participating can come along I think there'll be links posted to the group over the next week and hopefully I can make it because it would be nice to see and talk to everyone else who's knitting this project as well so yeah this has been a lot of fun I'm really enjoying this uh, can't wait to get to the steaking part and also a little terrified of the steaking part. No, not terrified, cautious. <laughs> I'm a little cautious when it comes to the steaking part because obviously there's always a risk, but I will make sure I secure my knitting either with a crochet, I forget what they're called, crochet or a sewn, um, I can't remember the word. I've gone completely blank. You're probably yelling at me and it'll come to me later. Reinforcement. <laughs> I'll either do a crochet or a sewn reinforcement. The steak will actually happen here in between those white, white columns there. And we'll be picking up some 
button bands and knitting some sleeves so sleeves are done bottom up as well and I'm excited to continue working on this it is a lot of fun I have two more whips to show you and they're pretty quick whips and a couple of acquisitions I don't think I'll go through everything today because there is so much here and I am conscious of the light just ev evading me now so we've got two more works in progress I might start off with my crochet work in progress which I am holding in my gorgeous knitting chickens bag this is a bag by vintage Mildred and I love it the inside has this beautiful contrasting fabric it is so joyful and I have plans to knit an emotional support chicken but that's not what's in this bag right now but it is coming there are very very specific plans this has been a work in progress for 15 days but to be honest I've worked on it for two I am crocheting another pot holder So this is the, I'll pop the pattern on the screen. It is a free pattern. I have just gone blank on what it's called, but it's a pot holder. I have made a few of these this year already as gifts. And I was heading to the cinema with my younger son a couple of weeks ago and thought I need something easy to take with me. And I started this and I got through three rows and went, I don't think I can crochet in the dark <laughs> at the cinema. So I left it at home and I didn't, really didn't work on it very much until last night. Last night I picked it up while I was watching the lovely Cherie from Ollie and Bella. I was catching up on her Patreon channel. So I did a few rounds on this and it's really fun. Um, it's coming along really quickly to be honest. Considering I've barely touched it. Now I am using the organic cotton by Lincraft in the colorway hedge green this is the yarn here and yeah I thought this would be fun I think I bought this yarn around Christmas time thinking I would make some Christmas pot holders <laughs> and then never worked it up so yeah I'm really enjoying this pattern it's a free pattern it's single crochet around and around and around and it creates this cool double layer so essentially it's sort of like this but as that's what it's called it's called the turn on itself pot holder <laughs> oh goodness um yeah it turns on itself and as you keep crocheting around you end up just seaming this together in the middle and i usually do an i cord loop occasionally i attach a little wooden um, ring to them if i feel like it to be honest I'll see how I feel with this one and my aim is to make two of these but let's focus on one I have wound yarn for the second one in case I am inspired to start it as soon as this one's done we shall see I haven't made one of these in a few months but it's really fun to pick this up again it's a lovely quick project and I'm really liking it some other little things to mention I am using my tulip four millimeter hook for this or G hook love these hooks they're absolutely lovely to work with and I think I'm making this one quite a lot bigger than my last ones I felt like they were a little small I like a pot holder that like covers my whole hand just if I'm going to use it to take something out of the oven I don't want to risk burning myself so I think I chained about 46 chains for this one I think the pattern says to chain about 30 ish again the notes are in my project page which will be linked down below but yeah i just wanted to make it a little bit bigger so in theory this is a 100 gram ball i was able to get one pot holder and a dishcloth out of one 100 gram ball but because i've made it quite a lot bigger i don't know that that's going to be possible i might get the pot holder and maybe half a dishcloth out of one ball but that's fine i don't actually mind that at all yeah I'm having fun with this one. My final work in progress is being held in this beautiful bag by Sandy by the Lakeside. It is one of her bunny bags and I love it. It's just so convenient. It's a good size for this particular yarn that I'm using. Uh, so I am using the Color Lab Sock DK yarn and this time it's in the colorway blues. 
I have been trying all the colors of this range out the last few months. I knit a pair of socks for my husband in the pop colorway, then the muscle bar hat for my older son in the rock colorway, and I'm knitting a pair of DK weight socks for my youngest son in the blues colorway because this is definitely his color. So this is a half finished object and I won't pop it on a blocker because it's it's fine. You can see that it's a sock, but this is the first sock. And I use the DK weight vanilla socks recipe by Kay Litton or the crazy sock lady. And one sock is done and the second cuff is started. That color looks super bright in this light. And maybe it is because the lighting's really bad right now. But essentially, uh, DK weight socks, 3.25 millimeter needle or a US 3 needle. And I am knitting these on my Chowgu 9 inch circulars, except when I get to the heel and the toe, and then I use a 32 inch cord and do magic loop on one of these instead. I have my little progress or needle toppers on here again these are by tea time retreats i picked these up in bendigo and they look like our little shorty so i love them so much and yeah uh when i knit these dk weight socks i usually do i cast these on at the cinema actually and i knit the whole cuff in the dark which i was pretty happy with my two by two rib there and i think i did around 14 14 rounds of the rib I think it was around 14, I'll count them, maybe it was 16. And then I did about 45 rounds for the leg, heel flap and gusset, and around, looks like 60 rounds for the foot for my son, which gives him growing room because I don't know that his foot is actually that big, but when I checked, um, the last pair of DK weight socks that I knit for him, which was a couple of years ago now, that is the foot length that I knit and he hasn't complained that they're too small. Now I am using a little progress keeper here that is by, I think this one is by 111 windmills. It's from a uh, advent calendar that I had a couple of years ago. It was in that and it's so cute. And yeah, these are a lot of fun, very simple. Uh, it's a bit of car knitting. I cast them on at the cinema, as I said, my son and I went to see the new Inside Out 2 movie, Inside Out. I think it's called Inside Out, <laughs> going blank now. And it was really nice to have these with me. I felt like I got through quite a bit of it during that movie. And yeah, these will get done when they're done. There's no deadline. There's no event for these. But I haven't knit my son a pair of socks. And I gave him the option as well as I had with my older son. Did he want socks or a hat with this yarn? Because I bought the yarn specifically for him. And he asked for socks. So that's what he's getting. Those are all my works in progress. Those are all my finished objects. And I have so many acquisitions, but the lighting is terrible. So I will just talk about two. <laughs> because I don't think it's going to be possible for you to see the colors very well. If you watched my Bendigo recap video, you would have heard me talk about half-baked hand-dyed yarns and their amazing self-striping sock yarn. I bought two balls of their self-striping sock yarn in Bendigo and they had a fun competition at the show where uh, customers could choose their perfect colorway of self-striping yarn and then Danny, the dyer behind Half Baked Hand Dyed, chose some winners. She picked two amazing winners and then posted on Instagram that they were ready to be ordered so I could not resist and I had to have both. Even though my, my colorway wasn't selected, but it was my first Bendigo, so I thought I needed these in my life. So the first colorway she had was this one here called Cozy Cake. It is a beautiful pinky, mauvey, <laughs> little bit of green in there as well. 
it's actually really stunning and I got this one on the DK sock base so this is a 75% merino 25% nylon I think it doesn't actually say it just says superwash merino nylon I'm assuming it's 75 25 there are 225 meters per 100 grams in this skein so that is the first one and then the second one I got which was also one of the winners from Bendigo is autumn in the 70s and then I got the sock set and I love this one so much now this socks this sock set is actually on the four ply or fingering weight base which is 380 meters per 100 grams again superwash merino nylon it's beautiful absolutely stunning so i got those two and i actually got an extra one of this one and it's this is the autumn in the 70s colorway again and the reason why i purchased an extra one is because i reached 4,000 subscribers a few weeks ago and I really wanted to give back some love and do a giveaway for this sock set. The giveaway will be open internationally and I, all I ask you to do is leave me a comment. It can be anything, any comment at all. And I will draw a winner through random comment picker for the next episode and I look forward to sharing this amazing yarn with one of you. I am so grateful to you for coming here, for your support, for your likes, for your time. It means so much to me that you choose to come and share some of your precious time listening to me talk about my obsession here. <laughs> uh, it's really heartwarming. I just am so grateful that there's been such an amazing community around this channel everyone is so supportive everyone is so friendly and it brings me so much joy to be able to record and share everything with you and i just wanted to give something back so yes giveaway for this sock set because i'm so grateful and i wanted to give something back to you what better way to celebrate right now than with something that I fell in love with in Bendigo, <laughs> which has been a highlight of the year for sure. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is something that has been gifted to me. And I have, me I mentioned at the beginning of the episode that I made a recording of something else this morning. I had the pleasure of being approached by Kado or Kado, I keep not knowing how to say this, who reached out to me a few weeks ago to see if I was interested in trying their new electric yarn winder, which of course I said yes. I was so honored that they would ask me to try out their product and they sent it to me and it is beautiful. It is a pinky color, pinky purple, but still in the right tones for my aesthetic, which is great. And I tried it out this morning and it was so fun to put together and to put to the test. I wound up three balls of yarn with it and with each wind I got better at using it and it performed better. <laughs> so I'm so excited to be able to keep using this. I'll pop some footage um, on the side here if I haven't already to show you my little test of it this morning and there will be also a separate mini episode sort of showing an unboxing and a review of this product because it was so fun to be able to try out and to be able to test out and for it to work so well. When Kado sent me this beautiful product, they also sent me or set up a link for my followers and my subscribers to access to be able to buy your own if you wish. So you will get a discount of 30% off of your purchase if you decide to purchase one of these by using my link, which will be in, in the description below. I'll pop everything on the screen and in the description and when that video comes out i'm not sure if it'll be before this one or after this one um you can have a look at what this is like and what i think of it which spoiler alert i'm really happy with it i'm looking at it just over here right now and it's making me really happy 
So I wound up my next ball, which I showed you earlier when I was talking about my Alma. Look at that beautiful honeycomb of a cake of yarn. I love it when yarn cakes get that honeycomb effect. It just makes me so happy. So yeah, it's it's a winner for me. I think that it will allow me to do other things while my yarn is winding because it's motorized and there are safety features included, which I think is amazing. It will never sort of just rip your yarn from the skein or from the cake if it gets stuck. There's, there's some good little safety features there, but it allows you to do something else while your yarn is winding. It allows you to rest your hands from that repetitive motion as well. And ideally, you may be able to knit while your yarn is being wound. Obviously not with the same yarn, but on one of your other projects, if you're anything like me, one of your mini whips. So <laughs> highly, highly recommend this product. I am so grateful to Kadu for reaching out to me, for sending me this amazing product. And I am so happy to share that joy with you all uh, via the link that you can use there. If you decide to purchase anything using that link, I will earn a small commission, but it does not cost you anything extra. If you use my code, you get the discount. So don't forget to do that as well, because that's there for you. I don't have an expiry date on that code at this point in time. If that changes, I will pop a comment in the description box below if this video is watched down the track. But right now, that's pretty open-ended for now. But just disclaimer, that may change in the future, obviously. So yeah, very excited to be partnering with Kadu and very excited that I have a new toy to play with that will make winding yarn a breeze. I really want to share all my other acquisitions with you, but the light is terrible and this has already gone on long enough. So I will finish off there. I wanted to thank you again for watching. Please don't forget to enter the giveaway for my beautiful did i show this upside down before <laughs> don't forget to enter the giveaway for this half-baked hand-dyed beautiful sock set that i am so excited to share with you all or one of you <laughs> leave a comment down below tell me what you're working on maybe tell me where you're from tell me whatever you'd like to tell me and you will be entered into the draw to win this sock set Thank you so much for joining me again today. I really appreciate you and I hope you have an amazing knitting day, night, evening, whatever time of day it is for you when you're watching this. And I look forward to chatting with you again very soon. Bye.